Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to a Monday. It is the Earthmaster here. Monday, August 5th, 2024, about 11, 12 a.m. California time. Latest activity here on the earthquake globe shows a 3.8, the area of New Zealand. Still seeing a little bit of activity there. Also, um, should be another quake hiding out here. Looks like in the green flag here in Southern California. We'll get to that earthquake activity in a little bit. Want to chat about space weather real quick here. We got a double X flare event earlier uh, this morning. Fairly decent X flare, 1.7, and then subsequently a little bit later, another X flare, as you can see there on the chart, a 1.17. So let's see what's going on here from the space weather site. Solarham.com is the site for this. Uh, there is the X flare activity that uh, stirred up. Let's see here. It looks like this was at. 1340 on the western limb of the sun that's going to be the uh, 1.7 x flare departing sunspot 3767 uh, produced that flare and then a short time later uh, let's see here well this is the M flare there's another x flare that peaked out here let's see where this is coming from maybe potentially that same active area over there let's pull up the uh, video here real quick and see what we've got in the last couple hours oh look at that back here maybe that's where it's coming from but uh, then again that was uh, a couple days ago so let's pull this up and watch the last few runs the departing sunspots over here producing quite a few flares also back over here so let's see what we got here well that kind of jumped real quick there so <laughs> a couple different areas that look like of some interest out here in terms of flaring but uh, as you can see here they've had a, a double x flare event and uh, i don't think any of those regardless if it's on the western limb or the eastern limb over here they are not into position of where we would see uh, any subsequent CME if there were produ if it was produced so as far as the aurora possibility goes too far out to the west and the eastern limb of the sun need to have a little bit more focused here in the center to get that direct impact to the planet but uh, still looks like we're flaring out there it may have that other X flare may have came from this region on the far side almost the far side of the sun you can just barely see it cresting uh, the western limb so leave, uh, the uh, flare threat still remains somewhat elevated here. 25% chance for X flare. M flare at 75. C flare around 99% possibility. And the sunspots in general, quite active, quite numerous. Look at this massive region out here on the eastern uh, quadrant of the sun here. We'll have to watch that in the uh, coming days as that uh, rotates a little bit further into view. Couple different one, a couple different sunspots here facing the Earth are uh, somewhat noteworthy in the value that it could uh, produce some larger M flare, maybe even an X flare around this region here. We'll keep an eye on those areas as they are currently facing the Earth. No major roars in the forecast, and uh, there's our uh, G3 class storm there from a couple days ago. Oh, actually, just yesterday here. Excuse me. <laughs> All right, Let's see what we got here for earthquake activity. Starting off here in the uh, California area, looks like a little bit of a swarm going on here on the uh, southern end of the Brawley Seismic Zone, actually in between the Imperial Fault and the Brawley Seismic Zone. This little area right here is seeing uh, a little swarm of activity here. I think most of this is just from today. Let me double check, see what we've had in the last couple days. Not a whole lot, so majority of that from this morning just some ones and twos out there really no main quake but this area does see quite a bit of swarming out here on any given uh, any given month any given year any given day so we'll keep an eye on this because you know obviously a swarm is indicative there of some uh, further pressurization out in the region and of course sitting up north here just a little bit is the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault 
Further out and about here, the Bay Area, Northern California, got a little small microquake, 2.1. Rest of Northern California out here, pretty quiet. Not a whole lot going on through the Pacific Northwest. Let's check out the trimmer map from uh, yesterday, where we only seen about 26 epicenters of trimmer, Northern California. Not a big deal. Uh, further out and about here, across Idaho, a couple quakes there from yesterday including that 3.2 just off the, uh, the uh, Sawtooth Fault system. Yellowstone National Park, nothing showing up there on the USGS map for now. A couple smaller quakes out in Texas and Oklahoma and uh, New Madrid Seismic Zone looks pretty quiet. A little 2.5 out around the Great Smoky Mountains. All right, world view. Well, let's see here. What have we got off the coast? This is from yesterday here. I didn't get a chance to cover this last night, but... Uh, that's at the extreme northern end here of the Hikarangi subduction zone, literally just prior to it. This area, of course, has been seeing a lot of deeper activity underneath the North Island area, uh, indicative of subduction zone quakes. And this here is the major subduction zone. And that little earthquake uh, popping off just prior to the uh, subduction of the plate. Got to keep an eye on the uh, New Zealand area for sure. Again, looks like there's another 3.8 stirring up down there. Uh, typical clustering going on around the Philippines, southward, Indonesia area. A uh, little bit of larger movement here along the Java Trench. Let's go see what we got. 5.1 coming in earlier this morning. A couple quakes here prior to that. A lot of times we'll watch this uh, displacement of pressure travel up this plate boundary literally you can watch it day by day looks like that may be taking place out here uh, with the current activity so keep an eye on the northward progression of that uh, movement a little earthquake out in the uh, mid indian ridge we're just north of there carlsberg ridge from yesterday 5.1 nothing else coming in there today See what else we got across the area. A whole bunch of movement there from, uh, looks like late last night, early this morning, up in the uh, northern area of the globe, down south as well. Uh, let's go check out Hawaii real quick, see if anything has changed out here in terms of the volcano activity, which uh, there's, a, there's a few earthquakes. Got, got about 17 earthquakes up here on the map. Not a big deal. Check out the latest information here on this volcano there, Kilauea Volcano. And there was really not a whole lot of movement here in the last couple days, kind of at a standstill. There is some earthquake activity obviously showing up on this seismograph station there. Let me bring this up here. Make this a little bit bigger, work a little bit better. Past 12 hours, there we go. A lot of spikes on this one. So there's definitely some more earthquake activity than, that, than what's showing up on the map. A bunch of smaller spikes out there. So still got the pressurization going on here. Uh, nothing new on the tilt meter, I don't think. Let me double check. Holding fairly steady in terms of tilt across this area. Uh, the summit area see what we got here still going up a little bit as noticed on the weekly chart and also the month not quite to the level seen back in uh, the end of july where we've seen all that displacement of magma off to the upper east rift zone but uh, it's continuing to go up here quick glance here at iceland where we're seeing a whole bunch of earthquake activity down around the katla volcano as well uh, actually, it looks like that's just to the west here. So overall, the rift zone seen quite a bit of earthquake activity. Also down here across the uh, Savart Singhi area, the Blue Lagoon area, power plant region. A uh, handful of smaller quakes. Not a whole bunch of swarming yet, but I'm noticing, you know, that wide distribution here of earthquakes across various areas. And it's not only Iceland. We got that further movement up north as well. So that could... Uh, intensify the potential out here for another eruption this whole area of course is 
uh, inflated with a lot of uh, volume of magma uh, subsurface area and uh, it's up to that previous level that we've seen uh, prior, to, prior to the last eruption here a couple months back Let's see if we got any new updates <coughs> Uh, this one was put out a couple days ago, so they just chatted about the increased probability of a, another eruption here in the coming days. Um, again, earthquake activity is going to be the key to watching that. Right now, specifically in that area, there's not a whole lot here. But regionally, as a whole, it's increasing. So we'll keep an eye there on the Savart Singhi area for some further large-scale movement and once that takes place there far as far as the uh, uptick in earthquake activity then then we're gonna talk about an eruption there pretty soon question is where all right uh, let's check out the latest information here on uh, Debbie tropical storm Debbie which uh, looks like we're at about 70 mile per hour sustained winds um, moving off to the north northeast at about eight miles per hour. Let me check out the uh, a different model here, real quick. Stand by for a second. There's Debbie. I believe it did reach hurricane status there for a short period yesterday or late last night. See area of circulation <clears throat> right here, just over the uh, portions of the Panhandle, northern Florida area. These guys are just getting hammered with a whole bunch of rainfall, and uh, that is expected to uh, forecasted to uh, continue its journey off to the northeast slowly but surely, and then uh, <clears throat> weakening, but also at the same time providing a lot of rainfall over there. Quite a bit is in the forecast for this area, unfortunately. Uh, let's go check something here. Current rainfall. These guys are just getting started here with the rain. That's going to continue to uh, accumulate. Rain accumulation here. Let's show you guys next three days. Technically, we need to watch the next five days because this tropical system is going to uh, do a number of different things that could continue off to the northeast or it could hover around this area for a little bit and uh, Create more of a headache locally for these folks down in the uh, South Carolina area. We're looking at uh, You know quite a bit of rainfall that's being forecasted here. That's 18 inches. Some of the other uh, NOAA weather models are showing up to 20 and maybe even locally 30 inches of rainfall across this area, so no joke. This is a big-time rainmaker and uh, a headache for a lot of folks out there having to deal with uh, some flooding here in the uh, near term. Out west, California, another day of 100 degree temperatures out here. No rain in the forecast here at all. Hopefully uh, we get some cool down uh, weather here soon. All right, seismograph stations, uh, pretty quiet. One little spike there on Petrolia, Northern California. But aside from that, things look uh, pretty quiet across the board in terms of current activity. We'll continue to keep an eye here on the West Coast. It is starting to look like a little bit more activity lighting up out here. Got swarms down south. Um, and there's been a little bit more earthquake activity in the Baja, California area. Look at that couple threes see threes and twos in there a little swarming going on south uh, within this area here USGS showing one of them a little 2.8 but there's more activity and that uh, further activity down south here is a good indicator of overall overall regional stress out here in the region so keep an eye on the California area today we'll be back a little bit later on folks with the uh, a daily update a little bit later on this evening unless something major happens so enjoy your day and um, a lot of craziness going on in the world we'll catch you guys later <clears throat>